A family finds that a swarm of wasps have taken up residence in their backyard. The kids start praying that God would send someone to get rid of them. Wait till you hear how God took care of this problem. It's coming up next on this episode of Better Life Today. Welcome to this episode of Better Life Today. I'm Doug Garcia, and we're going to be doing another program of Stories of Faith. And with me is Sayuri Rodriguez. Sayuri, welcome. Thank you. And you and I like to get together to do these programs yes. because we love to talk about what God, what is, God doing is doing now, today, in mm -hmm. today's world. Yes. And we find so many stories to share with people. Too many. We, um, before it's we get good. started, though, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear some stories about your adventure with your foster kids. Yes. I always like to hear about it. I always ask Sayudi, what's happening? Uh, what did they do today that's cute? Yeah. And so it's a little bit of an entertainment to me to hear every day <laughs> what you're going through. And for us, it's like lesson after lesson after <laughs> lesson. Lately, they are um, they're doing a lot of outreach without even noticing, really? which means you know they're sharing their love for God. So recently, there's a... There's a lot next to our house, and they're starting to build a house there. Oh. And the kids are fascinated by that. And so they've been going and just kind of looking at the construction workers. And our little girl came and said, you know, Mommy, I really want to make a big sign. And I want to make a sign that says, smile, Jesus loves you. Do you want to come with me to church this week? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, that's a big sign, you know? <laughs> and we had been putting it off, putting it off, and finally, I got her construction paper, you know, the, the big poster paper, mm -hmm. and she started writing. Now, to write, do you want to come with me to church and everything, you know, we thought it's kind of big, so let's go for something smaller. And so she said, hello, smile, Jesus loves you. Oh. And she just was so excited to do that. But they also go and they talk to them. So they, every time they come after school, they go outside and they wave their hands and they're like, you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up. And they, <laughs> the, the men, they just love seeing the kids just <laughs> waving and saying hi. So um, even last night, we were talking about different ways that we're able to share with people that, um, that God loves them. And I said, sometimes you don't even have to spend money. And she was like, wait, the water that we have here in the house, it's free, right? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and she was like, oh, we need to take them water. And so it's just really cute to see how they love helping people. So has she taken that sign and put it up in the window yes, yet? Yes, yes, yes. She's ready. It's out there. Did, the sign is do there. Do you know if they've seen it or not? Um, I don't know yet. Oh. We'll find out because it's just last night that she put that out there. So oh. we'll find out. Maybe well, I'll have so more cool. stories. So even little kids can witness. Yes. And they're yes. finding their little ways to do it. And you know the thing about it is when a when an adult is, when a, a child, an innocent child comes up and does says something like that to you, how can you say no? How right. can you turn them down, you know? Yes. And it stays in your mind. Um, recently we went on a trip and for the first time we we had the kids and we went on an airplane. Mm -hmm. And our little guy, he was so excited, beyond. He could just talk about the plane. We're going to go on a plane ride and very, very excited. So we get there and we're waiting and waiting, you know, and then finally we're inside the plane. And as they were walking to the plane, you know how you kind of step from that long hallway, the, hallway and yeah. then up to the plane, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, now we're on the plane and making this big deal. and so loud oh. that the uh, pilot, the captain, yeah, yes, the captain. He, he heard them and he was like, come over here, let me show you. And so he was able to show them all of his Controls, control room. Yeah. And, and then they went back and he kept asking, are we going to start moving? When are we going to start moving? And then finally, when the plane started moving like this, mm -hmm. um, he was so excited. He was like, we're moving! 
Moby, where Moby? Everybody could tell that this little boy, <laughs> this was his first time. Everybody kept turning around and smiling, you know, and the little girl was like, daddy, daddy, hold my hand. The four of us were there, right? So he's like on the other side of the hallway holding her hand and she goes, let's pray, let's pray. She was really concerned. So she was like, let's pray. So that was a witness because people were able to turn around and look and see us praying, you know, and to hear him be so excited about, we're in the air, we're in the air and just making all this. He had the biggest smile. Now, you know, our little boy, you've oh, yeah. met him. Oh, yeah. He has the cutest smile in the world, and so it was just And precious. he is full of enthusiasm. He is. He is. Yeah, he doesn't know so how were to the, speak. So were the people around you amused or bothered by all of this oh, they excitement? they were amused. They were so happy here in Ham, and they would go, okay, it's about to go fast. Here we go, here we go. They kind of joined <laughs> in the, the excitement. <laughs> oh, well, that is so cute. And they got, and was that their first time on the plane? First time on the plane, yes. What an awesome trip for them. Oh, yes. Yeah. They couldn't wait to go back just so that they could be on the plane they again. They wanted to do the... They want to keep going to the plane. Yeah, that's going to be expensive, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully they'll have good memories, yes. and maybe you took some video for oh, them to yes. remember. Well, very good. Well, the program today, I thought we would call it Growing Praise. Mm -hmm. You know why I wanted to call it Growing Praise? It seems like when you start sharing what God does in your life or the mm -hmm. life of your friends or family, people want to join in. Yes. They hear your story and they say, oh, I have a story too. Mm -hmm. And they'll start telling us their stories. And we have been receiving some stories here at Better Life from people who've seen our stories. That's right. But we have a Bible text that kind of gets us into the yes. stories for today. Would you share that? Yes. It's found in Psalm 34, verse 3. And it says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Oh. I'm going to read it one more time. Yeah, let me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And that's what we do, right? When we share our stories. That's what we do. When we honor the Lord, when we praise the Lord, we're sharing our stories. We're saying, God helped me. Mm -hmm. I was in trouble. Yes. I needed financial assistance. Mm -hmm. I needed a place to live. I needed to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And then we tell people how that happened. Yeah. And that is magnifying the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is praising the Lord. That's We're right. saying, God helped me yes. in my time of need. Yes. Well, I got a most unusual email okay. the other day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we are located in Oregon, mm -hmm. and we broadcast into California. Mm -hmm. And through the Internet, it? we're able to broadcast even further mm -hmm. than we have in the past uh, years. And we got a, I got an email from somebody, and it shocked me because it was from an Arab country. Oh. On the other side of the world, somebody had found our videos of telling stories, mm. uh, stories of faith on YouTube, and they were watching. Wow. And they wrote a note saying how it was encouraging that we should keep sharing stories of how God works. And because of the country and everything, I'm not gonna mention a name. I'm gonna make it rather um, generic. Mm. But this person wrote us and said, I was watching one of your programs and you talked about God giving us the desires of our heart. Mm. And that's what God did for me. Then the person went on to explain what happened. And they said, this is a small thing, but they saw God's hand in it. Mm. And that it was simply this. Uh, they said that they lived in, an, in a one room. I guess they rent a room working in this Arab country. They are, said uh, that they are Christian and that... You know how it is when you have a room and everything matches, all the furniture matches? Yeah. It looks right and it feels good. Mm -hmm. For this person, that was important. Okay. To be in a room where everything seemed to match made this person feel good. If they weren't in a room like that, it felt disharmonious. Mm. So this person said, I remember that God helped me in this area. And then they went on to explain how. Mm -hmm. they, need, they were in a little room. They needed uh, furniture a chair, a table to eat by, to study by. And one day, one of their friends said, our business is getting rid of their old furniture. Oh, Would you like nice. to have some? And went down and saw it and brought it back. And later on, there was more furniture. And when all the furniture was assembled in this person's room, guess what? Matched. It all matched. Oh. It all color coordinated together. And the person said, I knew that was from God mm. because that was the desire of my heart. Yeah. The Lord knew it and the Lord gave me the desire of my heart. Oh. And it was a simple thing. It's a small yeah. thing. It's not parting the Red Sea, 
But we, as we say before, God is interested in the small things in your life. Right. He's interested in the big things in your life. That's right. You are his child. He's interested in everything. So nothing's too small. That's right. Don't, don't, don't uh, feel I can't pray to God about this thing. It's mm -hmm. too small. Mm -hmm. You don't, don't think that way. Right. So for this person, that was their praise report. And now I'm sharing it with you, and you're seeing that God's name is being magnified Amen. in the small and in the big. Yes, that's true. That's true. And you were mentioning about he's interested in the small things. Yes. Kind of like what you were sharing at the beginning, right? The wasps. Oh, yes, They're the tiny. wasps, yeah. Yes, and we have a story. Yes. And um, we uh, got that story from my sister. She also started watching our stories recently. And on YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube. Um, she lives in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. but where she lives is um, Monterey in the academy of our church, Monterey Bay Academy. Mm -hmm. And so because they are right next to the ocean, right in front of their house, um, Internet is how they're able to watch the program. Oh, okay. It's better reception. And so, um, so she said that as she was watching our, our stories, she thought of a story that had happened to them recently. And she said that her husband was in the backyard. Now, because they have the ocean in the front and different things, they prefer that the kids play in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And so the husband decided that Sunday, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do some um, mo what is it? Mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn. Yeah. And so he started doing that, and um, he was having a hard time, so he was trying to do it really hard. And, and she's watching her husband, you know, because she heard that he was like, oh, you know, and trying this and that. So she watches from the window, and all of a sudden she starts seeing her husband jumping up and down and moving hands here and there. And, and she's like, what is going on with him? So he comes into the house, and she's like, what's going on? And he says, bees, bees, bees. Well, he still has some on the pants and everything. So finally he was done. And it, was, it actually turned out that he had pushed an underground uh, nest of wasps. Now, this was yellow jackets, right? Yes, yes. And so they were very concerned because they thought, oh, great, you know, that's where the kids play. Yeah. And they have animals, you know, and so they thought the cats are going to get harmed. You know, what, what's going to happen? So the, the, the kids notice. They start praying, you know, um, God help us to, to do something that they will go away. Um, and my sister's really, she loves animals. Ever since she was a little girl, she just loves them. Um, I remember that she had a cat, Kiki. Mm -hmm. I was always jealous of Kiki. Because she would pay so much attention to the cat. And so she's grown like that, just loves cats, you know, loves her kids. So, of course, they needed to do something to get rid of this. Um, the wasp. The wasp, yeah. yellow jackets. And yeah. so um, they decided that, not, that night, you know what? We're going to get hot water. And we're going to go and just put it on the hole where they have their nest. Mm -hmm. But, of course, they were like, well, we're not just going to go like this. So they dressed up, right? All big gear and things that they had, they were wearing. Now, my, my, um, my brother-in-law, he does some um, fencing. fencing. Yeah. So he has the mask, and he has two. So <laughs> here they are with their mask, and I'm thinking maybe like snow gear or something like that, you know, and they're all dressed up. The kids are in the window just watching mommy and daddy, <laughs> and they go out there with their big buckets, and they try that, and it did not work. And they were very upset, you know, they wept, and they came after them. So, oh, okay, let's go, let's go back. Well, they thought about it, and they said, let's Google this and find out what we could do. And they found a remedy, um, a home remedy, right? Mm -hmm. And so they said, okay, tomorrow we'll do this. Now, the next day comes, and when they come outside of the house in the morning, they found some... Uh, paw prints? Yeah, paw prints. And they're like, hmm, what is that? Okay, no attention. And then at nighttime, they have the remedy. They go and they put all of their gear again. Now, it was funny because she says that the neighbors will walk by like, what are you doing over there? You know, and the kids are so excited just watching them, you know, but praying. And the kids did not stop praying, praying, praying because they wanted to play in the backyard and they had not been able to. Well, they put this remedy. It did not work mm. again. And they were very aggressive. They were getting aggressive. By the day, you know, they did not want to be moved away. So the morning comes and they go and they see, they come out of the house. Again, the paw print is there. And they're like, what is this? 
It's not the, the yellow jacket, right? The tiny. <laughs> no, this is a big one. And so they're like, hmm, looks like a raccoon. Well, come nighttime, uh -huh. and they decided to spray and see if that will work. Mm -hmm. When they went out there, it kind of worked, but not so good. And the, the reason why they did not have success that night was because the gear, it was still, they were coming in, you know? So they were like, okay, so the next plan is we really are going to cover ourselves tomorrow night. You know, we're doing this, we're doing this. Okay, so they're really excited that tomorrow's gonna be the night. But morning comes and when they come outside, again, the paw print. And dad is like, this is a raccoon or raccoons. Mm -hmm. Let me find this. And she's like, no, 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 they're going, they're heading the paws. You can see that they were heading towards where the big hole, the nest with the um, wasp. And so she's like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. And he goes, no, wait, look at this. And it was empty. The wasp's nest was empty? It was gone. Oh. It was gone. The raccoons had taken it. And so then she Googled it and found out that raccoons like, I guess it's like their... Their dessert? Their dessert. <laughs> <laughs> and so the raccoon had dragged the nest and taken it away. And so the girls were like, wow, God help us through a raccoon. <laughs> and my sister says, you know, here we were trying to do a job that God already had an answer for, it, you know? Yeah. And it was small details, very small, but God answered. And the kids are now in the backyard, probably playing right now. <laughs> but um, it was wonderful to see how God answered that prayer. So God used nature. Yes. You know, he's done that in the Bible before. Yes. There was the That's army right. that uh, was driven by wasps, wasn't it? That, that the story? There was the donkey that talked. God can use whatever yeah. to answer your prayer. That's Sometimes right. it's people. And it's nice when it's people because then, mm -hmm. you, then you get to feel good helping somebody else or somebody gets to help you. Yeah. But if, uh, if people don't work, he'll send... Yes. He sent one of his animals to take care of it. Yes. That's a Very great story. Interesting. Well, we had another story come in. Mm -hmm. I think it came through you, a friend of yours. Um, her first name is... Oh, Beverly. Beverly. Yes. And she wrote a, an email that I think you forwarded to me. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ask? Do you remember if you asked her for this story? I think I had asked um, some of our members from church, from the church in Roseburg, uh -huh. if they had stories that they would, they would, they would like to share with us. Oh. Um, and she was one that, she was one of the first ones. Well, she was kind enough to write it up for us. Let me, do you mind if I read it? Yes. Okay, this is what she wrote us to share her story with you. She said, my husband Wendell, oh, Weldon, sorry. My husband Weldon and I took a trip to Vancouver, British Columbia. After we settled into a downtown motel, we asked the hotel desk clerk how to get to Chinatown. But we were given directions uh, we were given directions and told, but don't walk on Hastings Street. Mm -hmm. It's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next morning, we took the bus to Chinatown. At lunchtime, we wanted to find, uh, they wanted to find a restaurant at another part of town that they could eat. A young lady stepped up to us when she saw we had a map in hand. We asked her how to get to this restaurant, and we saw it was only 8 to 10 blocks away. She said, oh, we can walk there. And then she told us that we should take the bus because it was too dangerous to walk on mm. Hastings Street. So they heard it twice now. It reminded us that we had heard uh, that the night before. Don't walk on Hastings Street. So that was the second time. Mm -hmm. So we took the next bus that came. We rode it until we thought we should get off. And then there were lots of people around And when we got off. But when we looked up at the street, uh, street sign, guess what name was on the street sign? Uh-oh. Hastings. Yes. They were on Hastings Street. We realized that the young, there were young, the young people all around us looked terrible, with chains hanging out of their pockets, piercings everywhere, their hair was uh, all dirty and tangled, and they did not look friendly. Some of them had been fighting and had bloody faces. Mm -hmm. So now they're starting to get worried. Yes. You know, there's, uh, it sounds like there's a good reason maybe to be mm -hmm. careful on Hastings Street. So we were scared nearly stiff as we walked on to the street corner. Oh no, we're on Hastings Street, where all the terrible thugs are. So now they're worried they got themselves into a problem. Just then, a kind-looking older man stepped up to us. He waited for us for the street light to, he waited with us for the street light to change. Then he walked very close with us down the street block. Hmm. The thought came to me, I wonder if this could be an angel. When that thought came, I wanted to really look at him. So I turned 
and looked at him really good as we walked along. Oh. He was finely dressed in a black suit, white shirt, and tie. His hair was pure white, he had smooth skin, and his eyes were crystal blue. Mm. I said to him, oh, this is a terrible part of town. And he said, yes, since the Woolworth store left this part of town, it has become a terrible area. Mm. When we were almost at the end of the long block, he said, this is where I go. And he stepped behind us and disappeared into a dark doorway. It seemed to us that he had just disappeared, mm -hmm. just vanished. Wow. As we walked quickly along for another block, we could hear behind us the awful noises of those young people screaming and shouting with their chains clanking. Mm. We were close enough to get safely to the restaurant. When we arrived, we sat down for a meal, and my husband and I both said to each other, I think that man was an angel. Mm. When we asked the blessing on our food, we thanked God for sending protection for us. We, we still feel that the Lord sent an angel in the form of a man who mm. we could trust. Amen. Isn't that a neat story? Sometimes you find yourself in danger and you just call out to God, help me. Mm -hmm. And you never know what might show up. Right. Yeah. Well, someday they'll find out if that was an angel. Yeah. When we get to heaven, we get to ask God, what exactly happened behind the scenes? Isn't that great? Yes. We get to see the whole picture. That's right. That's right. Very nice. I like that. Yeah. Well, you were talking about exalting the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and how when we share stories, you kind of think about it and you're like, oh, I have a story. So recently, I don't know if this has happened to you. I think it has, where uh, more and more people are watching the program uh -huh. and at church, uh, even at different churches that we've gone to, people come and they say, oh, and they call me and they say, hey, I've heard the stories. And, you know, I have to say something, and, and I'm going to pause right here and say thank you so much because I've had many people that come and say, we hear the stories of your foster kids and we're praying for them. Oh. And that means the world to us. And it's just exciting to see how. Um, and then they give us stories. Uh, recently, you were in Roseburg, mm -hmm. and there was a lady that actually had a story and gave it to us. And it's just exciting to see how when you share what God has done for you, mm -hmm. Others want to join in. Yes. So my husband and I were able to go to um, Arizona mm -hmm. for some seminars that we were giving. And we share with them that, you know, we work for a better life. He volunteers here for Vida Mejor. And I, tell, I told them a little bit about our stories. And you should have seen those kids. They wanted <laughs> to share their stories. And there was good stories there, wonderful stories. So one young lady, Linda, she shared with me that um, it was, she was in school and they sent her out. They sent the, the kids out to do some um, canvassing or, or selling books. Selling religious books. Mm -hmm. Religious yeah. books. And so she was kind of depressed because she had not sold many books. And she decided, you know, I'm just going to pray and go by faith. And she knocked at the door and this man opened the door. And he was surprised to see her. And she was like, oh, maybe I left my hair up. You know, what happened? <laughs> and he said, I had a dream with you. She said, what? And he said, well, you're here to sell something to me. And, and you came with a, uh, in a van, right? And there were other young people. And she's like, yes. And he says, that was in my dream. That was in my dream. And then he says, so what are you going to give me? <laughs> and so she thinks about it really fast. And she brings out one of the books. And she's about to give it to him. And he goes, no, that was not in the dream. <laughs> and he goes, it was a DVD. And she's like, oh, yes, I do have a DVD here. And she brings it out. And she's like, that's exactly the DVD that I had in my dream that God told me that I was going to be getting from you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Was that the night before he had that dream? Yes, yes. So she's out selling religious books. Comes to the door, and then guy's surprised to see her saying, I had a dream you'd be yes. here. And I had a dream you'd give me this DV a mm -hmm. DVD. And she yes. had a DVD. Uh-huh. That is wonderful. That is how God guides, you know. Well, that must have been a big encouragement to her yes. that God was leading in oh, her work. Oh, she was so happy, couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> it was good. And then we had another young lady who shared with us, and this was a story that we already knew, but sharing it again was exciting to hear, who said that um, she just felt so impressed that she needed to share with people about God's love. So she decided, you know, I'm going to start with sending text messages to my friends and family, mm -hmm. giving them a Bible verse every day. She started doing that for a couple of weeks. After, so, so a group of friends just, and family? You know, yeah, friends and family. And she just take it, choose a yeah. Bible verse, send it out send to their group. To the group, okay. yes. One day, she gets a response. 
and it says, uh, who are you? And she thinks, come on, you're funny. You know, you're one of my friends. I sent you a Bible verse. And she's like, Stephanie. And he says, do I know you? <laughs> and come to find out this was a stranger that got her text. So she, she mistakenly sent this text, her Bible text to some stranger? Yes. And so he's like, oh, well, you know what? Keep them coming. <laughs> Keep on sending the text. So she continued sending him, including her, including this person in her list of friends uh -huh. and sending the text. And he would get the text. He would get the text. Then he started asking questions. What church do you go to? And all these different things. And one day he actually met the, the young lady. We met him as well. And he started coming to church. We don't know what happened after that. But isn't it interesting that, you know, her desire was to share. Yes. And she thought, well, I'm going to start with family and friends. But God opened the door so that someone else that he had in mind would be able to hear um, good words. Wow. Isn't God, word. God is so creative. Yes. You know, you start to work for him and then he surprises you. Yes. Um, I, try, I, I think I've said this before. When you start your day, have your prayer with God mm -hmm. and say, Lord, I've got my plans today, mm -hmm. but you may have plans that are better yes. and different than what I expect. So go ahead, take over my day if you need to, and surprise me. Amen. And, and that was a big surprise. <laughs> you know, I, it makes me think how much God loves us, yeah. that he'll open different ways for us to be able to hear the good news. Oh, Do you have a short one from Souls West? Or another one? Yes. There's another one of these young men who was coming, uh, who had not gone to a church, but was um, experiencing something very difficult in his life. Mm -hmm. And he was in the gym, and one day being sad, one of the, the persons that worked the there, workers, uh -huh. uh, he came and said, why don't you come to my church? And he thought about it, and he said, no. But his mouth said, sure. And he <laughs> felt so bad, like, oh, now I have to go. He did end up going, started coming, because he started feeling that his life was being changed at the church. And he started yeah. telling his family, I'm going to church. And the parents were like, wow, he's changing. And he's going to church. <laughs> the mother one day gets a call from a friend that she had not heard of for a long time. This friend invites her to church. She goes to church. Guess what church it was? The same church that the son was going to. And after a few months, they, the whole family got baptized. Wow. Yes. So don't underestimate just asking somebody to come to church with you or seeing if they're having a good day. The Lord can use anything yes. to draw his people back to home. Oh, yes. Back home. Well, that's Amen. incredible. Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed some of the stories we've been able to share. Every time I think we get to the end of our stories, we find more stories to share. <laughs> and so we just keep making programs. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a story that you want to share with us, give us a call. We'll put the number up on the screen, and we're going to give you a little time to write that down. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what God is doing in your life. And then maybe we'll be able to share it with Amen. everybody else. And, you know, this is just growing praise. That was the name of our program, right? Yes. And that's what it's become. Mm -hmm. The Lord has done so much. And he didn't stop working when the Bible stopped being written. He continues to work. And some of the stories we're hearing about today are just as dramatic. Amen. So join us next time for the next Better Life Today.